Okay, we've got a new patch, and that means new ways to level up your characters, so it's time for the ultimate 1017 leveling guide. Believe me, this is going to be quick. So, here's the fastest way to do it. Get yourself a juicy 105% XP buff. And if you've got characters in that cursed 30 plus range, and no motivation to bring them up to the Dragonflight level, I've got some damn good news for you. Blizzard just changed your life. Like LG, today's sponsor changed mine. LG, who have leveled up my setup with their utterly god-tier monitor, the Ultra Gear OLED's 27-inch 1440p 240 hertz monitor. Yeah, 27-inch, my you know, perfect size. OLED, 240 hertz. This is an absolutely incredible monitor. I've never used one quite like this. Between the deep, inky blacks provided by that OLED panel, the color accuracy of the panel as well, and then the 240 hertz refresh rate, it truly feels like a portal into another reality. And it really is just that smooth. It is mind-bending. And to get that with such a high-quality, color-accurate OLED panel is... Yeah, it's ideal. It feels like endgame to me. Uh, for games like World of Warcraft, I just love the smoothness of doing, like, anything. I mean, hell, even using my desktop is satisfying. It is so smooth. It's unbelievable. And then when dropping into games like Overwatch 2 or Apex, that responsiveness, that frame rate, man, that really does level up my gameplay as well. And of course, it's amazing for creative work as well. So for me, it really has checked all of the boxes as my ideal monitor for all of the things that I enjoy doing with a computer. So absolutely, check it out at the link down below and also check out the rest of their Ultra Gear range as well. It's that same awesome specs design ethos tailored to other formats as well. So thank you to LG for sponsoring today's video. Man, that monitor is an absolute dream to use. And with that said, let's roll. The first part of the puzzle is a new 25% buff that has a chance every half an hour to become a whopping 75% buff. This will be massive for the 60 through 70 stretch. Right, so Dream Surge is the new 1017 feature, impacts one Dragon Isle zone for an entire week. It's mostly a max level activity for gear catch up, but it comes with a really tasty XP bonus. In the active zone, you get a flat 25% XP buff the entire time. That's pretty good by itself, but it gets better because buffs cycle every 30 minutes in the zone, and sometimes one of those buffs will be 50% bonus experience and rep for that 30 minutes. There is no known pattern just yet, but when it spawns, it's time to go very fast indeed. So when it does crop up, you absolutely will blast out those levels. The last few levels were an utter breeze on the PTR, and that was doing either the main or side quests in a zone at pretty much an average pace without worrying about optimizations. It was resulting in 30 minute levels even in Thaldrassus, which is the absolute slowest of the four zones. Once it cycled round to the waking shores, well, things got quick. And this was just following quests naturally and doing the old tried and true techniques as well. If you've got any speed leveling chops, this is going to be blisteringly quick. As an example for the Waking Shores, doing that zone with just the 25% bonus is going to take you maybe an hour and a half tops, right? Now that you've got heirlooms and maxed out dragon riding, and that's going to get you almost half of the way to level 70, perhaps more if your character is fully rested or you're making use of the Dark Moon Fair experience buff while you're there, and of course have the likes of Rare Scan or Silver Dragon installed, and you actually kill rares along the way because they give you quite a good bit amount of XP. I mean, usually killing rares can be a time loss, but with the Dream Surge up, there are actually loads of people in the zone killing the rares to help you out. While you do all this, you'll be farming up Dream Surge Coalescence as well, and that will get you item level 402 gear tokens when you do hit max level, which is nothing to sneeze at. So then this is perfect if you want to replay the campaign, find a new lore master on an alt, or just want a smooth solo leveling experience. Now, if you're really crafty, you can even exploit the first time crafting bonuses by doing all your first time crafts in the active zone to cheese out an extra 25% from that, making it a cheaper and faster way to get that level and a half. In fact, it may be worth waiting, right? Get the materials you need, and then whenever the 50% buff procs in the zone, go and craft your 15 items that will give you a first-time bonus for a whole ton of free bonus experience. 
Now, this may not be massively game-changing, but it's a nice speed boost with or without the big 50% buff proc, and it's only one part of the puzzle. Later on this month, there's an extra 30% to pick up as well, and something genuinely game-changing for right now, too. Time walking. This was an awesome method from 60 through to 70, but now, thanks to a new change, lower levels can do it too. That will make your queues lightning fast and will let you blast out levels at obscene speed. As an example, this week you can start time walking from level 30 in Wrath of the Lich King dungeons. And compared to regular dungeons, this is a massive speed boost. Doing Halls of Lightning, as an example, took 10 minutes. Doing the Nexus got over two levels, right? That's crazy. Between Halls of Lightning and the Nexus, Four levels were gained in like a 20 minute session, maybe 25. It was so fast. And that was without using the Dark Moon Fair buff. For dungeons as smooth and easy as these, the experience is absolutely insane and the queue times are quick. Of course, I'm sure you all understand time walking already, but there's actually something else coming in the next few weeks, Turbulent Timeways. This is an event with six consecutive weeks of time walking, each offering you heroic raid gear for your max level characters. And that will mean loads of max level characters will be running time walking, so your queue times will drop down to nothing and you'll be able to nuke out those runs. It's not confirmed exactly when it will be yet, um, it was just data mined on PTR, but the event now does have items and buffs attached, which will actually give you a quest and a XP bonus that extends in duration and stacks up to 30% when you run time walking dungeons, as well as an award for maxing out the buff for five weeks in a row. It's pretty crazy. You might be seeing Blizzard's plan then, massive stacking XP buffs, because if you play your cards right, once this event starts, you'll be able to do time walking to stack up that buff to 30%, bringing any lagging characters up at a hyper pace of like maybe 10 levels an hour or slightly more. And then at level 60, you can go and do the Dream Surge Zone, which of course will be another buff for a total of a 55% buff. And then if you're lucky enough, for the additional buff to be on the Dream Surge Zone, you'll actually get an insane 105% bonus XP in that zone. Basically, it's like hitting YouTube video and clicking 2x, but it's like you leveling up on your character. That is just mad. By our estimates, this should seriously mean between like four and six hours from level 30 all the way up to level 70 in ideal circumstances. Maybe adding in another 30 or so minutes if you're unlucky. And getting to level 30 should not be more than two or two and a half hours. That means that one day of play, not even hours, one play session could get you a max level character. Okay, this all seems kind of complicated, so let's break this down into a quick to-do list for you. A lot of the specifics I'm borrowing here are from the current Worldwide Warcraft leveling master, Haraldan's free public guides. You can hit his content up if you want that stuff in massive uh, detail. It's awesome. Uh, now, this absolute legend got himself from level 10 to 70 in four and a half hours while the Winds of Sanctuary buff was up. That's the kind of thing you too will be able to do. Now, we're going to break down the path from 1 through to level 70 in light of these new changes. So, of course, level 1 through 10, that should either be Exile's Reach or just, you know, play an allied race. Then, for levels 10 through 30, based on Haraldan's speedruns, you should make use of a few amazing XP sources. Doing each Burning Crusade dungeon via Chromie time once for the quests is extremely efficient, but the queue times could be an issue if you're a DPS. Now, once you're done those, or if you need to skip them because of the queues, uh, you can go and do Cataclysm Chromie time and basically enjoy the fastest zones in the game. Years ago, I actually pulled like the database numbers for the number of quests in every zone, and then I compared that with the total area of each zone to find like some of the fastest ones in the game. Uh, it's nice that Haraldan also has had similar results, and this means that for the Alliance, Elwyn Forest, Lochmodan, and Red Ridge are like the fastest in the game. It is insane you will get Whiplash. Whereas for the Horde, Silverpine Forest and Hillsbrad are, again, absolutely cracked fast. Now, after all that, if you're still not level 30, just hop into Warlords of Draenor, Chromie Time, like do the intro quest, and you should get the rest uh, of the way fairly easy. Okay, once you're done, if it is Burning Crusade or Wrath of the Lich King time walking week, then it's time walking time. 
If it's Cataclysm or Mist's Time Walking Week, you'll need to be level 35, um, 40 for World of the Draenor, and 45 for Legion Time Walking. And that means if you want to be as fast as possible, you should really hop on those earlier Time Walkings that you can do at level 30 ASAP. Now, if you need like more levels, let's just say it's Legion time walking, you need to get up to level 45, I would highly recommend you actually just stay in Warlords of Draenor and uh, you do like Gorgrond and Talador. Those zones are again absurdly quick, especially when you're lapping up all those bonus objectives as well. So essentially time walk as early as you can, depending on whatever time walking is currently available. And uh, if you can't time walk yet, continuing on in the zones of Draenor will absolutely be the fastest way to get to level 60, only having slash played a few hours. Time walking, of course, is simple. Just drop out a chromie time so that the uh, option actually shows up, which is a really unintuitive thing. And then just blast out the dungeons. They're not hard. They're not a complete cakewalk. So, you know, do use stuns and interrupts at least. But the scaling's in a pretty good spot. You will blast through them. Tanking at level 40 on a monk was utterly, butterly smooth and fast. Now, if the Turbulent Timeways event is up, then you should be getting potions uh, from doing all of this time walking that will stack your buff up at 2% a time. And once that hits 20%, it'll boost itself to 30% XP. Uh, now you get about two levels of dungeon, that means it should take you like, what, 15 or so dungeons to hit level 60, and uh, that will also get you fully maxed with a 30% buff that's fully extended. Then you just need to hop into the current Dream Surge zone in the Dragon Isles and blast your way to 70. And even without that event and the extra buff, time walking will still get you to 60 at a blistering pace. Once you're 60, you've got two paths to 70. You either continue time walking if you're not vibing with leveling, or you just go uh, to the Dream Surge zone, especially if the mega buff is activated, and you just nuke out some campaign quests for that obscene 105% XP. It's mad. Uh, really though, that's just down to whatever you personally enjoy the most because both of these are blazingly fast. And of course, if you're a DPS player and you do have some queue times, you can always knock out quests in the Surge zone while you wait. Just make sure to stay in the Dream Surge zone until you are done quests. You've picked off rares as they spawn and check for any world quests that perhaps may overlap with side quests that you're doing because that way you can knock out two birds with one stone. That's a lot of XP and it feels good. To close things out, let's talk about ways that you can squeeze even more speed. Because hey, doubling or tripling a slow play style is still kinda gonna be slow. So here's how to go fast if you want. One, maximize your DPS. It's the oldest trick in the book. Just squeeze all that juice out of your spec. Get into the habit of pulling big and popping your cooldowns. This is actually why tanks have been faster levelers at a few different points throughout history. They can basically do humongous range pulls and massive AoE burst. In fact, Harldan's world record was set on a Guardian Druid because of Moonfire and Fresh being a simple, easy AoE. Remember, now heirlooms go up to level 70. Those will save you plenty of time as well. Next, maximize your move speed. Press every go fast button on cooldown. Mount uh, all the time you're traveling, even if it's just a little bit. Take talents that have got move speed and never stop running. If you're really going for it, you can use items like gun shoes, goblin gliders, and the XA-1000 surface skimmers to help you save even more time. Optimize your routing. This is an ancient boomer technique that we had to do back when things were slow. Uh, whenever you get quests to grab items uh, or, you know, do objectives at the same time as, uh, you know, having an objective to just get kills, the most impactful thing for you to do is to get all of your, like, grab objectives, like, you know, using items, opening locks, do all of those first, get kills along the way. You don't want to be in a situation where you've done all the mob killing you need, but you've still got to go and click at a whole bunch of objectives and pick things up. Uh, this, of course, does apply as well to setting your hearthstone to where you think you're going to need to go back to and just using that to save just a few minutes of travel time here and there because it all adds up. And the real key is doing all of these optimizations, damage, speed, routing, because if you're saving yourself 10 to 20 seconds per quest, 60 quests later, you've saved 10 or 20 minutes which is kind of mad. If you start saving 30 seconds a quest from big pulls and very effective movement, you can easily shave an hour off your total playtime. The same, of course, goes for dungeon pulls. A uh, you know dungeon taking either 10 or 12 minutes may not seem like a big deal to you, but 
That actually adds up to serious time saving. So, as an example, it is worth, uh, you know, maybe going watching some of Harlan's runs, seeing how a player like that actually plays. And maybe you could consider actually being a tank. Because if you feel confident enough tanking in those time walking uh, dungeons, you'll be able to set the pace of the dungeon, go as fast as you can possibly do, because the tank sets that pace. You'll build up your confidence as a tank, and you'll save your queue times. It'll be a pretty great situation. It's what I did personally last time. Anyway, that's it for today. 105% XP bonuses are coming up. Enjoy all of your power level characters. And of course, a big thank you to today's video sponsor, LG. Because, uh, yeah. Speed leveling on a very fast monitor is very fun. All right, that's it for me. Check the link below. I'll see you next time.